It's me, Duncan Moore. Don't speak now. Rest a while. Well then, what happened? I know he took you fishing down on the rocks, but when I saw the pair of you heading back for Ach Moor, I thought you were safe enough then. Why did you come down here? Murder had to go to the fisherman's brothy, make sure it was locked up, and he sprained his ankle. Sprained his ankle? He was nimble enough just now. I, I, I volunteered to help him. I will break that long crater in pieces. I will have the black heart of him out of his miserable body if I have to tear it out with my bare hands. But he wasn't to blame. I fell. The bold fellow stood behind you down on the rocks, one push in the back, and you were away. But no, that would have been murder by his own hand. And murder Rua has not the guts. He would never stain his conscience with open killing. So he sends you down here with a tale about seeing the body. Ah, oh, here, the slyness of the man. Nine seasons Neil Ross has been at the salmon fishing, and never once did he fail to lock up the body. But, but, but then why did he... Any tale was good enough to drag you here. Aye, he lay up there on the grass, foxing a sprained ankle, knowing he was sending you to your death. But it's all a mistake, I tell you. I slipped and fell. Now, do you see? It has been like this for a while back. Safe enough in the daytime for a man who knows, but what chance had you creeping along in the darkness? You were feeling the shock of Alec, and no wonder. But wait you, when I lay hands on the red fellow, he'll wish it was himself had fallen off the bridge. But why should he want to kill me? I told you it could be dangerous to know too much. I doubt there is more than the red fellow had a hand in this business. He would be afraid to make a move by himself. But if somebody big enough suggested that you would be better out of the way, then Murder Rook would take the hint quickly enough. And if you were out of the way, Alistair, there would be nobody left to take the croft at Achmoor away from him. Aye, that would be the way of it. The red fellow would be helping himself in more ways than one. But if he tried once and failed, he, he might try again. You stay with me from this night on. Murder Rook would need to be watching his own skin. Come on. You mind the day you found the message had been stolen from your wallet and I told you a fox could be a dangerous creature when it was cornered? Sure. Well, ever since that day, the red fellow has not taken a step outside the house between nightfall and sunrise without me seeing him. But how? On the hill behind the house, flat to the ground. It is easy enough if you've ever stalked deer. That's how I saw the pair of you leave the house tonight. Up you go then, Alistair. Do we have to cross the bridge again? Aye. Thank the salmon for you being alive. I was on my way to collect that bag when I heard your cries and made for the bridge. I'm telling you, another minute and it was you away. Well, yes, I suppose so. Oh, think no more of it, Alistair. It was a hard knock you had there, but that is the way of the world. Many a bad time your father had, but I never saw him down in the mouth. 
He always used to say, never mind, Duncan. We never died a winter yet. This will be Alec, but best to be sure. Karam Valach yet. First. Ah, hi, Alistair. You have a rogue for a friend. I have a. Would look bad if we were seen here at this time of night. What are we going to do now? Oh, we must wait and see for a day or two. This is a queer, queer business, and we must be sure we make the right move. I think you know a lot more about it than you've told me. Oh, maybe I do, Alistair. Then why don't you go to the police? No, it is no good me going to the police. Maybe I know more than you, boy, but most of it's guesswork. No, if I wore a gold chain on my waistcoat, they'd listen to me, but nobody would take heed of any wild story from the likes of me. No, no, no. You're safe enough if you accuse a tinker of lifting a hen, but it's another story if it's the lads with the gold chains on their waistcoats you're after. Come on in, Alistair. Hang up your coat while I light the lamp. Duncan MacDonald. Hi. Hi, that's me. You are the tenant of number four, Mert. Uh-huh. What's happened to the boy? Oh. Well, he's had an accident. Sit yourself down here on the edge of the chair, Alistair, while I clean it up. Can you give an account of your movements between the hours of nine and ten o'clock last night? Why should I? I should warn you, a serious charge has been prepared against you. You can do yourself no good whatever by refusing to answer questions. What is the charge? The charge is theft. A considerable sum of money was stolen from Achmore Lodge on Sunday night, and I have reason to believe you are responsible for that theft. Well, well. Theft now, is it? I doubt you're in for a hard job before you can manage to prove that. And where were you at nine o'clock last night? Here, in this very kitchen. Now, just you tell me who accused me of thieving, and I'll break him in two and hand you the pieces. Never mind the threats. You were in this house at nine o'clock last night, yes or no? Uh-huh. You have a caller from the lodge? Aye. That poor true gang of a gamekeeper. It was Duncan this and Duncan that, and uh, would you be so kind as to accompany me to the lodge? You'd a visit from Mr. Judge. What time would that be? Uh, oh, uh... About nine. Why did he want you to go to the lodge? Well, he told me the Major would like a word with me. You see why the Major wanted to speak to you? Uh, well, he, uh, he told me the Major was after getting worried about the way his salmon were disappearing from the pool. Now, of course, you wouldn't know anything about that. Well, oh, now, I'm not paid to look after the Major's salmon. That is the gamekeeper's job, and I told him so. Just the same, you accompanied Mr. Judge to the lodge? Uh-huh. When you arrived, were you taken straight to see Major Cassell? No. The keeper showed me into the Major's study, told me to wait there while he went away and got him. Uh, nobody came in while you were there apart from Major Cassell? No. But Murdo Beaton was coming out when I went in. Duncan, I should have told you. When I got back to the house, Look, Murdo... Look, you'd like to stay out of this, boy. How long were you left alone before Major Cassell came into the study? A few minutes, I reckon. Was it not near a quarter of an hour? It might have been. I don't make a habit of timing myself when I'm waiting for folk. Did you see a roll-top desk in the study? 
Aye. Was it open or closed? Oh, I don't remember. Do you mean to say you were in the study for 15 minutes and you can't remember if the desk was open or closed? That's what I said. Well, what would you say if I told you there were 45 pound notes in a drawer of the desk? What do you expect me to say? That I pocketed the lot and walked out? Oh, man, there could have been a thousand pounds in that desk for all I knew. What cared? Told uh, you were insolent to the Major and you parted in very bad terms. Would you like to tell me your side of the story? Well, the, uh, the Major told me he'd had reports that I'd been lifting his salmon. <laughs> and I told him that if his gamekeeper tried using his legs for a change instead of his whining tongue, maybe the Major wouldn't have to worry so much about his fish. What time do you leave the lodge? Well, I suppose it would be near ten. Hmm. And at ten o'clock, Major Cassell discovered that two hundred pounds in five pound notes was missing from the desk in the study. Do you insist you left the lodge without that money? Certainly I do insist. Well, I have reason to believe that money is hidden in this house. And I warn you, the numbers of the notes are known. And where would I hide it? In the mattress? Under the floorboards? Or maybe you think I'd hide the money in the tea caddy to make it easy for you to find it, huh? Here. Go ahead. Have a look. You'll find nothing inside it but a few bills and a form for the calf subsidy. Numbers correspond. Do you still deny you didn't steal this money from Achmore Lodge? I do. Then how do you account for the fact they were hidden in this house? I can't account for it. I think I've got an idea, officer. And so have I. And when I lay my hands on the fellow responsible, he'll know all about it. Get your coat. You'll be charged and taken into custody in Portree. This is no way to be going to Portree. Even if it is the jail I am bound for, I must at least look decent. I'll give you a couple of minutes, no more. Right. Are you uh, any relation? No, no, just a friend. I'm here on holiday from London. Where do you hurt your hand? Down the road. Uh, the pool, more like. If your parents had any sense that they kept you in London. There's no respect for the law here. People think they can do as they please. And if you get into bad company, it won't be long before you're getting as bad as them. It starts off with a salmon.
Yes. I want to see Major Cassell, please. The Major hasn't breakfasted yet, but if you care to leave a message, I shall see that he gets it. I can't leave a message. I must see him. It's very important. It's a matter of life and death. What name? Alastair Cameron. Tell the Major I'm staying with Murder Beaton at Achmoor. Come in. Major, we'll see you now. Master Alastair Cameron, Major. How do you do, Alastair? Heard a great deal about you. Means a lot. <laughs> Beaton's not a talkative sort of chap, you know. Major, murder Beaton's up to no good. I saw him with all your money, and he stole the message that I got from the man with the scar who jumped off the train. Goodness me, what's all this? Trouble? <sighs> Never do on an empty stomach. Refuse to listen to you, my boy. Not until I finish my breakfast, anyway. Bad for the digestion. Have you had yours? I'll wager not. I suppose you rushed straight to me, eh? Yes, I came straight here. I am pretty hungry. Good ale. Breakfast first, business second. Sit you down. Uh, Master Cameron is breakfasting with me. Porridge and cream, <laughs> egg, bacon, sausage, plenty of toast. That suits you. Ah, oh, Jinx. If they set up camp anywhere near here, I'll have the police on their trail. Hm. Tinkers and poachers can't stand the blighters. Make my blood boil. Um, food won't be a moment, so uh, why don't you tell me what's the trouble? Duncan didn't steal your money. It was murder beaten. You see, when I got back to the house yesterday... Nobody knows a thing about it except Duncan Moore myself. And he won't breathe a word to anyone. You're quite right to keep it yourself. But what are we going to do? Duncan said you were a very important man. That's why I came straight to you. My dear fellow. <coughs> Shan't be two minutes. certain responsibility for you, Alistair. And you ought to stay here at the lodge till Beaton's safely out of the way. Besides, you look awfully tired. Need a good sleep, plenty of rest. I am a bit tired. I didn't get much sleep last night. Master Cameron is staying with us, Slater. I'll put him in the special guest room. Oh, and Slater, see that he has everything that he wants. <laughs> Joe, he's an honoured guest. I understand? Perfectly, sir. That's awfully kind of you, sir, but I don't want to put you to any trouble. Nonsense. No trouble at all.
there anything you require, sir? No, thank you. We interrupt this program to broadcast the following special announcement from number 10 Downing Street. Dr. Ernst Reuter, head of the Atomic Research Center at Marwell, has disappeared from his home. The Prime Minister has decided that the entire nation should be alerted in an attempt to locate the missing scientist. Dr. Reuter is the third prominent research scientist to have disappeared within the course of the last three weeks. It is believed that the other two scientists have left the country. All ports and airfields are being watched, and it is believed that Dr. Reuter has not yet succeeded in leaving the country. Dr. Reuter is 48 years of age, slimly built, and of medium height. He has black hair and a pale complexion. Some years ago, his left leg was crushed in an accident, and he walks with a pronounced limp. It is less than a week ago that Dr. Reuter's deputy, Mr. Jeffrey Hunt, disappeared from his home near Marwell in Buckinghamshire. Hunt. It Jeffrey is there that Hunt. he and Dr. Reuter were carrying out experiments into... Hunt at the Hill of the Red Fox. Geoffrey Hunt at the Hill of the Red Fox.